Um, hello, I am Nikita Popov and I am one of the main people who is working on PHP. And with me today here is uh, Nicolas Grekas, who is one of the um, principal engineers at Symfony. Hello everyone. Hello Nikita. <laughs> um, today I want to talk about PHP 8 and Symfony and how these two relate. So um, we have PHP 8, the next major version planned for the end of the year. And because it's a major version, that means there will be more than the usual number of backwards incompatible changes. And Symfony has already um, done some early work to be mostly compatible with PHP 8. And I just wanted to first ask, well, how, how did that go? Um, did you encounter many issues? What were the main issues? And so on. Yeah. Um, so we completely kind of a first step, first milestone, which is having a green CI for Symfony on Travis. Uh, one month ago, and there have been many steps before that, and there are still, I think, a few steps remaining. So um, we are quite happy, actually. It went very smoothly. Um, PHP 8 is pretty easy to support, and there are not that many changes that are required. I mean, the, some changes are mandatory, of course, because of BC breaks, but um, they are doable. It's not like big bang things where you 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 can't make an application work um, across several major versions of PHP. Um, so in Symfony we have uh, this uh, long-term policy of supporting old branches, and to allow people that decided to uh, start with uh, an old branch and so are still using a kind of old version of Symfony, so Symfony 3.4. Um, we maintain support for new version of PHP also for these branches. It's, it means that our challenge um, started with making Symfony 3.4 support PHP 8, which is a version of, PH, of Symfony that also supports PHP 5.5. So wow. we have this branch that has 5.5 as minimum and that has 8 as a working version on the CI and all versions in between work also. And it's one single code base with mostly exactly the same code with just a few differences, of course, on some edges where uh, we need to adapt for uh, the version of PHP. So kudos to um, um, PHP, the policy, the, yeah, the versioning and the backward compatibility policy of PHP itself uh, is just workable. We kind of prove it uh, in Symfony, and we leverage it. We leverage it yes to the maximum. Uh, so that's really really nice. Do you have any kind of specific thing that was harder than usual for a Symfony, or was it all relatively straightforward? Um, it was relatively straightforward. I think the first step is, was not related, or is not related to. Um, PHP itself, it's related to dependencies um, because we all use Composer, right? And Composer, um, every dependency, every Composer dependency has requirements and many dependencies are not declared that they are not compatible with PHP 8 because they have a PHP constraint that doesn't allow installing them on PHP 8. And so the first thing we had to figure out is how to work around these um, declarations that uh, we wanted to kind of um, prove wrong by making the code work on PHP 8. Um, so while working on this, uh, we realized that we could just remove the constraint for um, on Symfony at least uh, to allow PHP 8 and any uh, higher version. And uh, for dependencies, uh, of our own, so like doctrine dependencies and many others, um, we had to fake the version of PHP so that Composer would install the dependencies. So we have this composer.platform.php entry in our Composer JSON file in the CI um, that forces or makes Composer claim that 7.4 is running. And it works. Yeah, so this is definitely an issue I've often encountered myself. Um, so I always want to encourage people to test on PHP 8 <clears throat> because, <clears throat> um, because 
That way we can um, find issues earlier and actually have a chance to fix them before um, we are constrained by the general availability release. But unfortunately, it's not as simple as adding a nightly line um, on your Travis CI config. Because if you do that, then um, it will first complain that PHP unit is not compatible with PHP 8. And then a whole range of other packages. So you have to pass the ignore platform requirements option. At which point, usually other things um, start to break. Which is why I really do appreciate um, if this like upper bound on PHP version is going away. But I think like I saw the GitHub issue that changed this and there were quite a few people who did not agree with that view. Um, so do you want to say anything about that? <laughs> um, so yes, uh, in Symfony, we changed the requirement to allow any version super, uh, higher than uh, the minimum version we support. So it's a uh, higher, higher O equals symbol instead of the caret symbol. So we allow PHP 20 uh, to work with Symfony 5. Uh, that's theory, of course, because PHP 20 doesn't exist. Uh, the very positive thing about that is that it will, it should allow people to test with PHP 8 more easily. So, because Symfony won't block them. So, if you have a library, if you have a project, and you want to give it a try on PHP 8, you won't have anything to do on the composer side of things to um, install the Symfony components. So, you can try. And as you said, it's critical, I think, for the adoption of PHP 8 to allow people to test as early as possible and as easily as possible. Um, because there are always workarounds, like Ignore Platform, Platform Rex, you mentioned it, like the config.platform.php entry, which is another workaround for something that we should not do um, to me. Um, so there are people that think this uh, claim or this declaration is, is not correct, uh, telling we are compatible with PHP 20. I mean, any version higher than PHP 7. But um, what these people miss is that if you project yourself in the future, uh, in the future, uh, the version of the code that is currently the Symfony code base uh, will have evolved a lot. And nobody will install uh, that uh, version of today in 10 years. Uh, there will be new code. And this new code will, of course, support the new version in the future. And nobody will try to install 10 years old uh, code base uh, in their setup. So this issue doesn't exist because there will always be a newer version that fixes uh, and that basically um, turns the claim into some kind of promise. So it, it will work. There will not be any uh, downside to that. And actually, there is a downside to, to blocking and to forbidding uh, installing application on PHP 8 uh, right now, or maybe a PHP 9 right now, which is that um, we all run uh, old application. I have uh, servers that run 10 years old application. They are fine. They do their job. I have new code to uh, uh, new application to develop instead of rewriting them. So uh, I still want to run them on PHP 5 and then PHP 7.0 and then 7.3. And uh, I should be able to do that without uh, artificial uh, constraint or um, requirement that are not technical ones. If the code works on PHP 7, it's my job uh, to ensure that and to verify it works. Yeah, I think there are just some different philosophies there between um, like theoretical purity and some more pragmatism. There are quite a few, I think, relatively famous maintainers in the PHP open source community um, who like have a strong opinion that you should only support the very newest PHP versions and be very strict about your constraints because that um, reduces the maintainer workload and encourages people to do quicker upgrades. But usually, um, the way it usually turns out in practice is that people just end up working around um, this in various ways. Uh, for example, I, I'm, I'm aware that Symfony has this PHP unit bridge that um, I would say hacks around a couple of specific issues. Um, could you comment on that one? Yeah, sure. Um, so the PHP unit bridge started with this requirement I mentioned at the beginning. 
uh, we have this Symfony 2.4 code base and it runs on PHP 5.5, which means um, PHP unit uh, 4.8, I think, uh, because that's the only one that runs uh, on PHP 5.5. Um, and then, of course, we also run on PHP 8, and then we have to use PHP unit 9 something, or maybe 8, 5. I don't remember the number exactly. But because of all the BC breaks that happen um, between major version of PHP unit, of course, but along the years, uh, we wanted to, we created this bridge to kind of make a single binary from the external point of view that works across all versions. So then the bridge, uh, one part, one job of the bridge is to have this single PHP unit command and um, behind the scene it adapts um, and it selects automatically the version of PHP unit that it uses and that is compatible with the current PHP runtime. So that's that's why we created the bridge at the beginning and that's still why we're using it. So um, last year, I think that was last year, um, we made the bridge act as a polyfill for new PHP unit um, methods, assertion methods, like we have expect um, exception, which did not exist or does not exist in PHP 4.8, but we are still using these methods in our test suite, even on PHP 5.5, thanks to the bridge that adds these assertions so that we can use them. And that's how the code is compatible. Um, the code base, the test suite, I mean, is compatible with so many versions of PHP units. Okay, I definitely don't envy you uh, the need to support such a such a wide range of PHP versions. Um, so, to get back to PHP eight, um, of course, it has many backwards compatibility breaks, but it also has a couple of new features. And I think one that's particularly relevant for Symfony is the new attributes, which replace the um, existing PHP doc annotations. So I was wondering uh, what plans you have um, about migrating to those and also maybe what issues you anticipate because the feature set is a little bit different and I think it's not entirely straightforward to move from one to the other. Mm. So um, it's I don't have the answer. We don't have any definitive plan. We are looking at that uh, very closely. When, when I mean mean, I know that I am um, and I'm sure many people in the community are. Uh, I'm talking... Um, with Benjamin, who is uh, leading the effort uh, on the topic. He is also involved into the Doctrine project, and Doctrine is, is shipping this Doctrine annotation package. Um, so we all have in mind that at some point, Doctrine annotation should act as a forward compatibility layer, bridge, something um, that should uh, enable us to make a smooth, smooth transition. Um, so there is a vote ongoing, and on the vote I voted for the uh, sharp at, uh, so the Rust style uh, attribute syntax because maybe it, sh it would I think it would allow us to more easily adopt the new uh, syntax even in PHP uh, seven projects. Um, so that's why I voted for this. Um, yeah. So just to provide some context, because right now the hash sign is a comment in PHP the new attribute syntax would currently be interpreted as a comment, so it would be like kind of backwards compatible. Yes. So this would, this would work for simple annotations, but many annotations um, span uh, across multiple lines because they are just long. We could make them uh, a single line, but that's not practical. So there are also nested um, annotations that we use a lot um, in doctrine entities and uh, validation rules and uh, other annotations that we use. Um, so adv advanced declaration. So for those, I, I don't know, right now we, we wouldn't be able to use the attributes, um, the new attribute syntax, or we need to figure out a way to express the same kind of tree uh, using arrays, because we can add arrays there. Um, so I, I don't have the answer on this topic. We need to do some, some more research and to figure out. The community needs to do that. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we, are, we are learning um, to use PHP 8 uh, every day. So yesterday I worked on um, the union types uh, because 
Dunion types, they introduce some kind of BC break for us. I mean, it's not a BC break. It's just that we coded uh, without caring for any other kind of written type for the get type and get uh, written type methods on the reflection side, you know? So we do, uh, if um, this method has a written type, then call get written type get name. And of course, this doesn't work anymore. So now we added uh, many checks in the code base to ensure that the return value is a reflection name type and then call get name or call to string or do whatever we want with the written type. So we have some kind of preliminary support for union types. At least it doesn't break. <laughs> and we have more work to do um, because there are places where we'll benefit uh, from um, reading the list of possible uh, types in the union. And for this kind of uh, I, I didn't invest into that. I just make it not break, but right now I think it's going to be ignored. And so there are, there, there's a lot of interesting work, work coming uh, after. Okay. So thanks for talking to me today, Nicholas. Thank you, Nikita, for welcoming me.